Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome if you're new here. So if you clicked on this video, it's either because you're someone who hasn't really dealt into interior design yet, or you're either someone who just moved into a new place or you've been living at this place for a while and you want to give it a refresh and you want to switch up a space in your home, uh, maybe your apartment, your house, wherever it may be, and you just want to really process and go through your planning of how you want to design a space. Or maybe you're just someone that has a lot of experience and you care about what I have to say. If that's the case, thank you. But on today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my design process and how I design a room, what my thought process is, everything that I think about, what I go through as I am planning, the layout, the feel, the look of the space. Specifically, if you guys haven't seen my apartment tour yet, it's, I'll link it, this is the video right here. I'll link it down below. But I did kind of like an AD style apartment tour where I showed you guys my LA apartment. In the video, I mentioned that I designed all the spaces in the apartment and the rooms and how I thrifted a lot of things. I got a lot of things from flea markets. Also, I bought a lot of things brand new. But the main thing for me is that I really like my spaces to feel curated over time. I am always switching things up, changing things up. So it's really important. Number one thing, you guys, is that even if you feel like you're done with the space, just keep an open mind and know that maybe in the future you'll want to switch things up. It's okay to change your style. It's okay to want to refresh and switch things up every now and then. So the room that we're going to be talking about specifically today is my dining room. I recently added a couple of new things to my dining room and it's done. It's been done for a while. But I'm gonna basically show you my thought process of how I designed this super small space. My apartment is really open concept, so the common areas are all combined together. The living room, the dining room, the kitchen, the entryway, it's all in one big space. But I like to create little areas within this bigger space, little sitting, seating areas, conversation areas. And I'm gonna be talking about my dining room. So let's head on over to the dining room and We'll talk more all right welcome to my dining room as you can see everything is furnished everything is done all the little decor pieces so in order for me to show you guys how i designed this space and what my thought process was i want to get rid of everything and start putting the pieces back together and kind of talking to you guys about it so let's take everything out did that work did that transition work, you guys? Because that was a lot of work to get everything out of here. And I don't know if I'm standing on the right place. I don't know if I moved the camera. I hope not. And ignoring my socks, I don't walk with shoes inside the house. So um, let's just begin. Let's just begin. So first things first, the first thing I like to do when I'm working on a new space is figure out the big pieces. So for example, if I'm working on a TV room or a living room, it's figure out the rug, figure out the couch, figure out the coffee table, accent chairs, all the really big pieces. And then smaller things like decor pieces or side tables, all of that, you figure it out afterwards. So main piece in a dining room obviously would be a dining table. I used to have a round dining table that was at least. It just felt really small in the space. It didn't feel very homey to me. It felt like it was very dorm room um, dining table. So I set out to find a new dining table and it took me it took me like a week to find one but i finally found one that i was obsessed with on facebook marketplace and it was completely free you guys and i had to restore it because it was really messed up it was really old it was a table that was outside prior and all the stain had bubbled up so it really needed a good sand i had to get an electric sander that ellie actually gifted me and I had to get a stain that I liked and it took me like three or four days I think maybe more to sand everything down and be able to stain it. I had to strip um, the wood with some citrus strip and It was a whole transformation, but I think it was so worth it at the end I found 
such a homey table in my opinion. It feels like very, I, I don't want to say farmhouse, but it's very traditional. It's a real, it's, it's an exposed wood. I left it. I didn't put a clear coat over it because I really wanted it to age with time. And it's like such a beautiful vintage piece. And I got it completely for free. So rule number one, figure out your big pieces. In, in this case, the biggest piece would be the dining table. Now, before I actually put the dining table in, because of the layout of this room and because I won't have space once the dining table is here, what I'm gonna actually put in first is the bookshelf. So over here, I have a bookshelf that I found on Facebook Marketplace, so completely for free, you guys. It was really messed up, it, the wood was really damaged, so I decided to paint it completely, give it a little bit of more of a modern look. It's a very traditional shape of a bookcase, but with the paint colors that I selected, it modernized it a little bit. So let's bring that in, which is extremely heavy and I'm carrying, moving everything by myself, but let's bring it in and I'll show you guys how that looks. <laughs> the bottom of this shelf is really soft, so it doesn't scratch the floor. Also, these are not hardwood floors. This is vinyl wood, I think. And it's solid wood all right so that is pretty much where the bookshelf goes so the reason why i originally put a bookshelf there is because there's this little alcove cut out and I felt like a bookshelf there would be the perfect place to have a display bookshelf. So this has no actual purpose to it. Uh, it's all about decor and displaying some decor elements to bring a little bit more interest to a space. But we're going to get to the bookshelf styling later on in the video. So right now, let's just focus on bringing in the big pieces. So finally, without further ado, let's bring in the dining table. This is my dining table. Let me show it to you guys. So again, the main thing about my last dining table is that it didn't feel homey at all. So I chose this one, this solid wood one. And another thing was that it was really small. So another tip you guys is that you choose furniture for your space that really fills it in. You don't want something that's too small if you have a bigger space, or you don't want something that's too big if you have a smaller space. I felt like this table was the perfect size. And again, I wanted something really traditional, and I feel like this table is perfect for that. It has a little bit of a vintage look, and the same color that I chose is this super rich, darker wood tone. And it's really, really warm. It has some orange undertones and I felt like it complemented the rest of the room really well. I have a lot of, <laughs> I have a lot of lighter toned wood. So I wanted to bring something with a little bit of more character and I feel like this definitely does that. So there's another tip for you. Now for chairs. Step number two would be to find chairs that would complement this table. They don't necessarily have to be a matching set. Something that I like to do, this is a, six people fit on this table and something that i really like the look of is if you have the four chairs on the side uh, matching and then the two chairs on the headers of the table to be maybe different maybe a little bit more of an accent chair i feel like that looks really really good really beautiful it's really traditional and yeah so it took me forever to find some chairs for this table we didn't have any chairs for a little bit and because I, we got rid of the ones that we had before with the other smaller table, we sold those on Facebook Marketplace. And it took me a little bit. I wanted something very traditional. I wanted maybe like a little bit of, I wanted maybe like a little bit of, I wanted maybe like a little bit of. Right, what was that? This video is a mess. All right. I wanted something maybe with a little bit of a pattern on the cushion. I knew that I wanted wood. I didn't want any metal uh, chairs because we used to have metal chairs. 
So really think about the materials that you want to introduce to a space. Metals usually feel a little bit colder. It really depends on the tone of the metal though. But I felt like wood was very traditional and it brings a lot of warmth into the space. We're already working with a wooden table. So I knew that I wanted wooden chairs and preferably with some kind of textured cushion. Um, and that's exactly what I found. So. Let me show you guys the chairs that we found. So these are the chairs. Now, I know that this may not be everyone's style. Is this a good angle? Is this a good angle? <laughs> I'm gonna look at all this footage afterwards and freak out because hopefully the angles are not that bad. But I know that this is not everyone's style, but I really, really loved the fabric on these cushions. I feel like this kind of like plaid, Material is really coming in. I see a lot of designers using this kind of material into their home introducing this kind of materials into their spaces I don't know when I bought them. I remember I was sending pictures to my mom and I was like trust me this kind of fabric this kind of uh, Pattern is gonna come into style again because it's very timeless. It's very traditional very classic and Said and done because I've been seeing it all over Instagram. So there you go Obviously, I had to clean them up, put some Restora finish, clean the cushions. I took them apart and sprayed them with fabric cleaner and really scrubbed them. And it took a while to clean them, but I ended up getting the set of six chairs for 120 bucks. So 20 bucks each. It was a great deal, I think. And because new chairs, I mean, you guys, new chairs can go from like 80 to 150 for on the more affordable side per chair. So I felt like 20 bucks per chair was a really good deal. We got six for 120. I found them at the Society of St. Vincent de Paul and I believe it's in Glendale. And I've talked about that place a million times, but I love them. So let's bring all six chairs into the dining room. Friar, you're gonna help. So now that the six chairs are in, I really want to start thinking about which textures and materials work together. I have two bar stools right off here from the kitchen. There's a little peninsula and like a bar area. And of course I wanted to put two bar stools. I used to have two that really didn't feel right for the space. So I sold those on Facebook marketplace and I actually got these next two bar stools on Facebook marketplace. They were $5 each. So I got them for $10 and I painted them black actually uh, to give it more of a modern look. But I wanna start thinking about the materials and the textures that work together. So over here we have like this really warm wood already and we have a little bit of that black and that white on the bookshelf, the brass on the handles of the bookshelf. So that's what I'm really thinking about when I'm selecting the pieces for a space that I'm designing. I don't love to match everything. I don't like sets, but I love to mix and match and everything be a little bit different, but that they flow really well together. I like to mix styles to make it a really transitional space. It makes it feel a lot more timeless. If you guys have more of a really, really modern aesthetic, then probably all of your furniture goes really well hand in hand together and it feels, everything feels really modern. With my kind of style, it's very transitional. I love mixing the traditional with a little bit of modern, with a little bit of vintage. I feel like that's what best gives a space a timeless feel. So that's my style. I love a lot of neutrals, dark tones, light tones. You can call me a sad beige baby, but I also love a little bit of color. You know, I love including color in my spaces and it's okay to have different tastes. So I'm gonna bring in the two bar stools that I got for this room and show them to you guys. So these are it, these are the bar stools that I got on Facebook Marketplace and you can see I painted them this like kind of satin black and then it has a rattan top. So I love, love, love these. They're very classic, very traditional. So let's put these in the dining room 
And I feel like these are really trending right now, but this is such a traditional uh, piece of furniture, you guys. Right. You can see it coming together. And there you go. So, you can see how all the pieces really complement each other, even though they're not a matching set, everything goes really well together, the colors, the tones, the textures, the materials. It's really a blend and really thinking how you can complement your pieces within your space. So now we're gonna bring in some of the more final touches, the home decor, lighting, artwork, which I think really makes or breaks the space. Let me show you why. If I just left my dining room space like this, it would look extremely empty. Bookshelf is empty. There's nothing on the table. It's boring. No artwork on the wall. No home decor. Obviously I have this huge art piece um, that I made, but this is kind of like part of the, um, that artwork works more as a connecting point between the dining room area and the living room. That's why I didn't take it off or I'm not really talking about it, but there's also my Olive Atelier bench under it. And I also recently put this, um, kind of like art light on top of it. I painted it brass and I think it looks really cool. It gives it a nice touch. Again, thinking about every single detail. So now, the room right now feels very empty, but also really dark. One of my latest additions to the space is a floor lamp that I got from the Threshold and Studio McGee collection. This is, I believe, either from the spring or the summer, I believe spring collection 2023 at Target. And it was a beautiful rattan lamp that I have been loving since forever, since it came out months ago. It reminded me so much of a Lulu and Georgia lamp that I had seen online, but that one is $1,300. And this Studio McGee one at Target was $200, but I managed to get it on clearance because the new Threshold in Studio McGee Fall Collection, Fall 2023 collection just came out. So they were getting rid of all the stock that they had from their previous collections. So I snatched this one up, you guys for $46, $46 for a floor lamp. That's beautiful. So let's bring it in and show you guys how much light it actually brings to the space. This is the lamp. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. You can't tell me that it doesn't look identical to the Lulu and Georgia one. And again, you can see the rattan matching the rattan bar stools that are over here. Let me actually push them a little bit that way. Uh, that are over here. We have some brass details on the lamp that match back to the hardware right here. So again, it's really about thinking those connecting points, those little details that connect your furniture pieces together, they matter. So let's plug this in and show you guys how much light and warmth and dimension it brings to the dining room. Ta-da! All right. And Something that I love about this lamp is that it's dimmable. So it comes with a dimmer and I don't know. I just think it's very sophisticated. It gives it an elevated look to the space and having that option to dim your lights. It's so cool and it just brings a lot of dimension to your space. So I've been living with this space done for a couple of weeks now with the lamp, with the art, everything. And I don't know, putting it all back together for you guys on this video is just making me really, really appreciate every piece and how much thought I actually put into everything. And yeah, I really like it. Let's hang some artwork and put some stuff on the table, fill that bookshelf, and then the space will be done. So for art, I have two pieces of art that I actually painted myself that are going in this room. First one is gonna go on the wall behind me and the second one actually goes in the bookshelf. But let's start with the one that goes on the wall behind me. Let me go get it. So this is it. This is a landscape, abstract landscape painting that I did. And this frame I actually uh, got at the Melrose Trading Post. I think it was like 10 bucks. And I painted it because it was like a... I don't know, it was a weird color. So 
I just painted it, gave it, gave it this like antique look and obviously did the artwork for inside. And I just used um, some super simple canvases, those thin canvases and uh, put it in, literally taped the back. You can see this is my info. It just says tree field, Tomas Rosales. I literally painted it with acrylic and I love, I put the dates. I actually painted it on September 21st, 2022 my signature that's it that's pretty much it so let's just hang this on the wall right here thinking about what kind of art you like for your space is really important you want it to complement your furniture and your interior design style uh, obviously before you even start designing any spaces i recommend doing mood boards doing um sketches of what the layout of your space will be looking online for inspiration whether that's youtube pinterest straight up on google just getting to learn what your interior design style is for your home and what your preference is i really love landscape paintings i've done so many all over my house and yeah also the size is really important uh, i love um I love dressing my walls, putting art on them, but it's also good to have some space for them to breathe. So I didn't want to put anything too big on this wall. So I just centered it a little bit higher. It's under the lamp. It's a little bit higher than the bookshelf because there's some, tough, some stuff that goes on the top of the bookshelf. And yeah, I made sure that the frame worked hand in hand with the painting, but that's pretty much it for that painting. So let's put the stuff that goes on the table. And then lastly, we will do the bookshelf decorating. For the table, I'm keeping it super, super simple. I'm using the this neutral color um, runner. This is actually a tablecloth that I liked to, that I like to fold to make it look like a runner. We're just gonna put this on the center of the table again as a runner. And you can see that it has a big stain on the middle. That's actually just, uh, dirt you can clean it up but uh, the reason why it has that stick can you see it on camera yeah the reason why it has this big stain is because of what goes on the center let me show it to you guys so this is one of my favorite pieces in my house this is a antique china water pot and I love it so, so much. This is from Olive Atelier. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna put that in the center of the table and put some faux stems inside from the Target and Studio Mickey collection. These are the faux stems that I'm gonna be using. I bent the ends so that they fit nicely inside the pot. And you want to play around with it until you like the way it looks but yeah that's pretty much it let's do some bookshelf styling this is actually one of my favorite things to do bookshelf styling can be a little bit complicated and it's really about trial and error putting pieces in moving them around and really seeing what works best for you i knew that i definitely wanted to cover this like outlet um this like cord opening that was in the back right there and that's pretty much it. I'm going to cover that with some art and yeah, just fill out the shelf. Starting from the top shelf, I really like working in sections. So twos, threes, divide them each shelf into its own separate section. So first I have this little planet, this wooden planet that my brother had in his old apartment. And then I lived in that old apartment and I took it with me because I really liked it. I liked the black metal with the wood and it's just a little bit piece of him. And if I'm not mistaken, oh my God, scrap, if I just scratch this, it's fine. It's just a little piece of him. And I think it was actually a gift from my grandma for my brother. So uh, I don't know, it means a lot to me even though it's something so simple. Then I just have some books that I thrifted, some random books and I actually painted all of them so that the colors kind of matched my aesthetic and the tones that I was already working with in the space. So I'm gonna put those right here. As bookends, my friend Ashley, you guys met Ashley, she always makes fun of me 
for these but I wanted some marble bookends and I actually found these you guys these are knock-in holders and I got them at Ross they were one dollar each so it's real marble and stone bookends can get pretty expensive so for a dollar each it was such a great deal I wasn't about to pass on it so of course I took them I think it gives it a really interesting and unique look and if you're not looking too closely, I don't think you can really tell that they're napkin holders, but I don't really care. I love the shape that it gives it. So I'm really happy with that. Let's move on to the second shelf. I have this super simple, it's kind of more modern textured vase that I painted and with some dry florals on top of it. I'm actually zooming. I'm gonna put them like that. There you go. And let's put the painting in. So this is the painting I was talking about, you guys, that I made. It's, again, a landscape painting. Taped it in the back and painted the frame, too. Super simple. And I absolutely love this painting. I love layering artwork on a bookshelf. I like to put it on the back and then display some things at the front. So I'm just going to put a little vase and a candle. This vase I actually painted myself. It was glass and I gave it this kind of like, uh, I don't know, I don't even know what you would call this, like a polished kind of look, a little bit brassy, but really um, aged, um, patinaed, I don't know, I like this though, I love this face. So that's what I'm talking about, moving things around, I think I really like that. I like to step back, you guys, and look at it from a different angle and see if it works for me. Let's move on to this last shelf. So on this last shelf, I have this wooden kind of wheel looking thing. And I love this because it brings in the blacks from the bookshelf and the legs of the bar stool and then the wood that kind of matches the rattan that kind of shades. So I'm going to put this right here and I'm going to bring in some more books and textures. I love this binder that I actually thrifted. Let me show it to you guys. Oh, it was completely out of focus. There you go. You can see it now. <laughs> Last but not least, I do like to display a couple things on top of my bookshelf. So I have this kind of like um, candle, big candle holder that I put on top right there. But yeah, just a couple more things that I like displaying. Another vase that I made myself with a stem. This vase that I recently did with kind of like the green patina on top to coordinate with those shades, but yeah. That's pretty much it for the bookshelf styling. you guys that is it for today's video let me know if this is a kind of video that you guys like me to do more of i have a couple more spaces in my apartment that i could talk about you guys can go check out my uh apartment tour that i did ad open door style and let me know if there's another room or area of my apartment that you would guys would like me to do kind of like a more in-depth discussion on i can also do another video talking more about my design style a little bit more in depth of my process uh things that i like to do how i do my mood boards how i plan a room out and design a room out before i actually set to it if you guys are working on a space in your own apartment or your own home just don't get in your head about it and start thinking about what kind of style you like. You can go to antique malls and thrift stores and estate sales and yard sales and flea markets. You know how much I love taking guys with when I go to any of these spaces. And just start looking for pieces that you think are your style, that you're love in love with. Curate your room. That's like my main thing, that everything feels curated, that everything goes hand in hand together. Start putting the pieces together. Start with the bigger things. Work your way down to the smaller things like I did in this video and work on those final details last. And yeah, figure out your layout, your style. That's basically it. But 
Again, if this is a kind of video that you guys like me to do, for sure let me know in the comments down below. But that's it. That's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.